Hey, what's up? Peace. My name is Maury Green, and um, I am speaking to you from an undisclosed location in Los Angeles, California, Planet Earth. I'm a member of First Breath. Uh, we're an environmental organization that's uh, not afraid to use technology when we have to. This spring, I was working with a group of climatologists at the University of California, Berkeley, um, who'd been investigating some unexplainable, mysterious atmospheric phenomena. Um, and anyway, what they found is so strange that they dared not publish it in a scientific journal. What they've discovered about the true nature of, of air pollution in, in these modern times is so profoundly disturbing that, that I, I have to share it. So with this video, I'm blowing the whistle on the Black Cloud Project. I have to apologize because the video quality on this is, is admittedly poor. Um, in order to get it, I had to first hack the UC Berkeley research net and then pull a bunch of like half-erased files out of the trash and then digitally reconstruct the movie. Um, so, I don't know, I think it was intended for some kind of like big shots uh, at Berkeley, but I, I can't say for certain. But th let's watch it already. Okay. Berkeley, California is the home of climatologist and new media artist Professor Greg N has been using interactive computer programs to enhance our consciousness of how we have polluted the natural environment. In response to the mysterious events of this spring, Professor N was forced to re-examine his basic assumptions of how the world works, eventually reaching the revelation that our pollution has naturally developed a consciousness of its own by interacting with computers. In May of this year, people began sighting a small black cloud. The area suffers from poor air quality. What was strange was that, unlike other clouds, the black cloud did not move with the wind. Meteor could not explain soon, this however, phenomenon. even more baffling evidence started coming in. Residents, Residents reported that the clouds seemed to hover in the areas with the worst air quality, moving quickly to the next location as conditions changed. The bid lab sent samples of air gathered under the black cloud to chemists and biologists. Suspended in the air were, were a variety of synthetic and volatile organic compounds that I had never seen before including some that resembled some strange cousin of DNA. I would say that these chemicals were from some completely new and undiscovered branch of life on Earth, if only they weren't so utterly toxic. Patterns occur naturally in our environment. These can be as simple as the steady rhythm of day and night, or they can be too complex for the most powerful supercomputers to decode. Synthetic sonic analysis takes raw data and converts it into sound. We could see no natural reason for the anomalous patterns in the air quality data. When we listened to the data for carbon dioxide alone, it sounded like this. But when we listen to the data for all the measurements put together, more like intentional communication, not just like the rushing of waves, but like somebody trying to say something like this. <laughs> Intrigued, we had our computer specialists write a program that cleaned up the signal a this cloud was not only a living thing, but it was sentient, conscious, intelligent, and able to communicate. The black cloud was born when reactive chemicals in the polluted air combined in new ways that allowed them to somehow interact with the electric fields of the sensor networks used to study them. The black cloud is both a cloud of pollution and a cloud of information. Its body is a black cloud floating in the air, but its brain only exists in the network of sensors we use to study it. The black cloud by itself has no way of generating the electric signals that form thoughts in our brains. So gathering information about the black cloud creates the black cloud, and he who controls the information controls the black cloud. It was at this point that Professor Nair sent one of his students to study the cloud with simple sensors that measured and other pollutants. Although my student gathered excellent data, he became confused by the uh, power of the cloud somehow. He, he, he felt, felt that, that the cloud, cloud gave him all like powers. 
When the student started claiming that the black cloud was telling him what to do, a school mental health counselor recommended that he be removed from the project. Upon the discovery of the anomaly, Professor Neumeier immediately had the Black Cloud project team sworn to secrecy. We don't understand what the Black Cloud thinks, or how to communicate with it. If this secret were released, there might be mass hysteria among the majority of people who fear what they don't understand. Currently, Professor Neumeier has just finished developing and producing the Pufftron Sensor Network, a series of small sensors that measure air pollution and send it to a central computer for processing and analysis. The results of this experiment will be made available on the website. I don't have time to review the information in the video you just saw. Um, if you're mildly interested in my investigations into the nature of the black cloud, if you have any evidence uh, about the existence of the black cloud, please, please go to dailypolluter.org. However, um, the, the much bigger mystery concerns a site called blackcloud.org, um, which is a website that clearly contains information that's omitted from the video. The only problem is that it's locked. And in order to unlock it, you are going to need this, um, the Pufftron sensor device from the video. Um, Unfortunately, you don't have it, so I am going to uh, share with you the security verification page, um, which protects the site, and it looks like this. See? Five colors. Each displays ten different pollutants. Um, it seems that you somehow have to match them to unlock it, and this Pufftron is obviously the key because the, the five lights are the same color as the five colors. The very first thing we're going to test for is carbon dioxide, and there's a very simple test for that. And it goes a little something like this. Next thing on the list that we're going to try to measure is uh, social status. And if you look at my uh, fancy footwear here, mm, I don't see much of a change. But if we put it by the uh, brand new laptop computer, that might have something to do with a higher social status. The next thing on the list is awareness, which I guess means, you know, if you're aware of pollution, you're probably going to be able to uh, get out of it. I consider myself to be pretty aware, and well, I don't see much of a change. The next value we're going to try to measure is light, so check this out. Next thing on the list that we're going to try to measure for is NOx, which means nitrous oxide is a major pollutant, which can be found in a uh, huh, ready whip. <laughs> so here goes nothing. Huh. Mmm. Next thing on the list is noise. Now you can hear it's not too quiet in my neighborhood, but. Next thing we're going to test for is uh, ozone, O3, and uh, don't try this at home. Oh. Smells like a model train set. Next thing we're going to test for is SO2, sulfur dioxide, which uh, has that rotten egg smell. Ugh. And now we're going to test for temperature, so uh, I'm going to put this baby freezer and shut the door a couple minutes later and what we got huh? well I've also been using this opportunity to make myself some kind of a scientific knot dog so let's see what happens here a couple minutes later and Last thing we're going to test for is uh, volatile organic compounds. This is things like gasoline, alcohol, solvents, and uh, let's test this out. Whoa. So there you go, those are the experiments. Um, and, I, and I beg you, please, if, if you love Mother Earth, please try to crack that site and, and keep it on the down low, alright? Um, this is Maury Green, signing out.
Peace.